Tony Randall is um, Wellington City Council. Tony, good day. Good day. How's it going? Not too bad, mate. Nice to, nice to have you on the program. You guys were pumped at the weekend, eh? You had the All Blacks. You've had um, what else have oh. you had? You've had the Wiggles. <laughs> Yeah, we had uh, the world of wearable arts, the wow, big wow thing started and, uh, you know, um, 60,000 people into town and uh, people flying in from the Hawke's Bay. I, I talked to uh, a colleague and, and he, he came in from the Hawke's Bay, came back to Wellington, the Hawke's Bay, said the plane on Friday, he said the plane was full of people coming to Wellington for the test and, uh, and you know, everything else is happening. So, yes, Wellington, good old days, sort of, you know, a bit of a flashback, really, and it was really, really good weekend. That is, it warms my heart to hear that. I'm, I'm Wellington-born um, and spent 20 years there working there, love the place, and on its on its day, when it's pumping, it's it's pumping. It's an amphitheatre, it's a small town. It hasn't traditionally had the sort of the issues of the big city, but it's had all the attributes of a big town. And um, I love the place. Um, when But when it goes flat and sort of um, stayed and, you know, not pushing ahead, it's a, it's a struggle, right? And so it's been like that for a year or so, as the as you've seen the um, seen the public servants lose their jobs and what, 6,000, 7,000 lost their jobs. And it's really having an impact on the city, you know. That, all those incomes, all that spending has been dragged out of the city and been pulled. Um, so it must have been nice to have, you know, 48 hours of um, of what the city can do. Oh, absolutely. And and the weather actually turned itself on as well. So, you know, great sunshine, not not too much wind. We've got the sunshine today and the wind. But uh, no, it was it was, uh, it was a, it was a great weekend. And, and I heard from lots of different people who had a really good time. And uh, it, that's what we want. Um, although, you know, having two, you know, a couple of big events together obviously makes that happen. Um, I heard someone talk about it uh, being a big sugar hit, um, but it's actually between the <laughs> events that we've, we've got the struggle. That's the problem. Yeah, you almost need to spread them out a little bit, but you've had the sugar hit, you know, my man, God, we've just gouged on, sort of, gouged on sugar for the last 48 hours, and we're into now the, we've got the withdrawals coming, I suppose. But it's great for hoteliers, great for the restaurants and cafes, of which you've still got many, and um, you would have felt that, you would have seen the people. I wonder what, it, wonder what it, that sort of weekend was worth to, to Wellington. I wonder how many million dollars that pumps into the city. Uh, I'm not sure, but it'll be millions. Um, and... and uh, it, you know, Wellington is a, is a great city, you know, to attract people in, and you know, because we've got the we've got the restaurants and the bars, got great food. The waterfront is just the best, really, I think, in the whole of New Zealand, yeah, world class, agree. really. And and so we we've got a, this compact city centre where you can come in, and it's not just going to the event, but the stuff before the event, stuff afterwards. We've got to Papa, you know, if you've got kids, you you know, you don't know what to do then. To Papa is always good, uh, and of course, from the tourist side of view, point of view, we've also got things, you know, things like um, Alp Miramar with uh, Peter Jackson's, uh, you know, weather studios, and and then we've got, you know, all the ecological stuff as well. You know, the land there is just amazing. In fact, we've got so many kaka that they're actually becoming, you know, causing damage to the trees uh, in the botanical gardens. And you know, uh, it's, it's it's good you to know, hear this. You know, because I was too much, I was too much to, of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I said to someone the other day, what, what's, what's there to do for kids in Auckland? You know, what do you do in Auckland? And, and you know, I'm just uh, saying this to a mate last night. And just the way you just described Wellington, I brought my kids up in Wellington, right? So we were there for, you know, most of the you know, young years. And there was never a shortage, you know, whether it was to go to Zealandia or whether it was to go to Te Papa or, you know, whatever. Uh, Peter Jackson, I lived out that way. And so there was always something going on. And, 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 and because it's a manageable town, nothing's too far away. You can do all that, head to the Warrior if you want. But Auckland, I don't know, it's just... It's, I mean, in terms of Wellington, should be a buzz. It's a shame it's not. And it's, it's great it was in the weekend, but it's a shame it's not doing well at the moment because you know um, it's a great town. And I look at Auckland, and they've got all the things going for it. Population, there's big population here, but there's not much. I don't know. There's, unless you're out fishing in a boat or whatever, it's got a great harbour. But what else has it got? Rainbow's End hasn't changed in well, sixty years, mate. You know. Well, uh, the thing I find about Auckland, I do love Auckland. I mean, it's a great city. It, it, it is, um, but. Everything is so far apart, and any time you want to do the next thing, you're into the car, you're driving 20 minutes, 10 minutes to find a park. You know, it's, it's always you know you're always on that you know on those roads, and the roads are quite congested. So you're always having to go from one place to the other. Um, I went to the transport museum, you know, really good. Uh, you know, looked at the aircraft and you know World War II aircraft and everything. Had a had a good time there, but then you're back in the car and off to somewhere else for lunch. Uh, yeah. Wellington, you can walk around and do it. And that's the great yep. thing about it. 
that's if you've not been blowing off your feet or, or getting drenched. But if the weather's good, <laughs> you can walk around it. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, um, I tell you what, the best transport museum, if you want to go to a transport um, place, if you're ever in Invercargill for the school holidays, go to Bill Richardson's. That's Bill Richardson's Transport World is the biggest kept secret in New Zealand. If you know about it, it's not a secret, but if you don't, you've got to get there. I, mean, I don't know if you get into your cars and trucks and everything, but this is a phenomenal collection that will have you just spellbound, I reckon. Yes, yes. Um, look, I think there's some amazing places you know, throughout New Zealand. In the Wellington region, we've got our own little little gem in transport, which is the Southwoods Museum, yes. which is up the yes. Kapiti Coast. And yes. you know, where well, like you know, he he, collect, he collected he collected all sorts of amazing cars, like a couple of hundred. And we're talking about not just you know some classic sports cars or just some old cars, but like he's got a a, a bulletproof Cadillac. You know, that he's yeah, got some it. of these yeah. iconic <laughs> cars from around the world. And and so you can go there and spend the whole morning. Uh, you know, if you're into cars the whole day. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I think people should, you know, get on the net and, and, you know, if they want to do something, there are some other places that, that just don't, just get forgotten about a wee bit. And uh, you're right, uh, you know, all across New Zealand, you've got these little places which are fantastic. Um, and I'm going to give a shout out too to some of the, uh, to the microbrewers around Wellington and, and around New Zealand. You know, if you want a good lunch, you know, go, go, go to a microbrewery and, and have a lunch there. Um, just, just you know, Garage Project, for example, and uh, that's you know, that's a good time. Yeah, I agree. Wellington's got plenty of those, um, those sort of um, breweries too. It's sort of quite a leader in that space. Um, oh well, this is good for Tori Farno. Then she can claim credit for this. She can claim credit for the Wellington's going off campaign. Eh? Hey? Oh, well, uh, look, Wellington does it itself. I don't think any. I don't think any any politician should claim. You know, good weather and, and an all-black test. Um, you know, Wellington's still struggling in between, uh, and and that's that's for real. And 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 unfortunately, when it you know comes to Tory, she uh, I'm not sure what what it is about her, but she seems to make herself the news instead of the city. And uh, you know, that's why I don't think we've got quite the message across about what's happening in here. Um, you know, people are genuinely struggling, struggling, and and you know, her claim to be struggling was. Not quite as, as as genuine when there are genuinely people who have lost their jobs, uh, who are sitting in cafes in the suburbs wondering what to do next. You know, probably even as we speak, uh, and looking around. Uh, you know, Wellington is doing it tough, but of course, you know, we we knew when uh, I think everyone mostly knew when they voted in the new government that the money was going to run out one way or the other, and the new government was really just being honest about that. Yeah, I've, I find, um, you just back to Tory, what well, you said there, you're right, I hadn't thought about it in that, that term, but whenever it's been headlines about her, it's been about her and not, not the city. And if you look at guys like Shadpolt over the years and, you know, Tim Shadpolt and people who have become sort of personality mayors, um, they are 100% um, uh, talking about their town. You know, remember Southland here, how, how Shadpolt put Southland on the map in so many ways, and by just being a little bit eccentric and so forth, whereas Tori is it's all about her issues and, her, and whether she's telling the truth or not or whether she's making that up or whether she's been drinking or not or driving or selling a car or whatever. And it's just all a bit personal and it's a shame because, you know, it, actually it does take it does take away any momentum that the city might have. Yes, and, and it takes away from just getting a focus on a, on a few of the issues that... Uh, uh, happening. I, I've been listening to you this morning around uh, work from home. Uh, that's a huge thing in, in Wellington because uh, Wellington is actually quite a hard city to get into and out of. You know, we've got this, in, we're not a really big city, but we've got really bad congestion at peak time because all of the jobs are in the centre. And so everyone's trying to get into the centre. And since COVID, of course, they're just simply not coming in, which is the fundamental problem. Um, lots of people only work. Uh, one day, two days, three days, and often they're the same days. It's the sort of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Monday and Mondays and Fridays. You know, the car parks are empty, the roads are empty, and uh, so really we've got a three-day city running in the CBD at the moment, and that's why the cafes are struggling. That's m one of the big reasons why it's sort of not working. It's just that you know people are only in town for two or three days instead of five. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm with you on this. I, I've seen a, a bit of this in, in Auckland as well. I reckon um, it's not quite as bad, but still, I reckon that 
Tuesdays are now the busiest days on the road. So Mondays have become Tuesdays because that's, that's people's Monday because they've spent Monday at home. And Friday, Thursday is the new sort of Friday. So, um, yeah, I, I, the, 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 I, can, I can see... I mean, I, I mean and, Chris, for election, they should I mean, actually be able to have the right to order public servants back to work. Public servants work for the government. The government says go to work, go to work. You know, simple. If you don't like it, give, the, give up the job. 